what JUnit does is it creates a new instance for every method run. One common thing that you would need is you would need to initialize stuff before the method runs. And you, we ran into it uh, in our tests as well. You see here, we are creating a new instance of math utils every time. You need that every time because, again, you don't want to depend on a previous initialization. So you want to create a new one. So you have like a clean slate every time so that you also don't stand the risk of a previous test polluting the state somehow putting something into the member variable or something like that, which would affect the test. So you want to start with a clean slate. You want to initialize stuff. It's a common requirement. You would want to do some kind of initializing in all of your tests. And that's something that JNet provides. JNet provides a hook. It provides a mechanism for you to say, I'm going to give you a method, run this before every test, please. And then JUnit runs it before uh, every test. You have a class with multiple methods. You initialize once before, no matter how many methods you have, you want that code to be initialized at the very beginning of the class. And uh, no matter how many methods you have, you want some code to execute at the end of the class, uh, you have uh, you put those hooks over there, right? You want something to get initialized at the very beginning. You want something to get initialized at the very end. And then you have initialization code that needs to run for each method. You have three methods, you want it executed three times at the beginning of each method. And uh, similarly, you have a teardown uh, code, that's another hook. You can say, after each method, I want certain things to execute. And again, this gets executed as many methods as you have. You have five methods, it's gonna get executed five times at the end of each method. Does it make sense? So these are the, these are the hooks, the lifecycle hooks that JUnit provides. So for instance, uh, let's say if we have our math utils test here, right? we have um, three methods. So what's gonna happen here is if I use this hook, that code is gonna run before any of those three methods run, all right? And then this hook is gonna run once before the test add, once before test divide, and once before test circle radius. And then this one gets executed once immediately after the test add, immediately after test divide and immediately after uh, circle radius. And then this one gets executed just once at the end of all of those things. These are the lifecycle hooks uh, that JUnit provides. And uh, these all have uh, annotations that you can use to put on your methods and then JUnit is going to execute them, all right? So you can write a method and tell, hey JUnit, initialize it, execute it with this hook. You can write another method and say, hey, JUnit initializes for this hook, all right? So the way to do that is by providing uh, that annotation. So the annotations are before all, after all, before each, and after each, right? There are four annotations that you can use which correspond to those four hooks that I talked about, right? This is before all. When you put, in, when you put a method in your test class and annotate it with before all, it gets executed for this hook, right? You put an annotation after all, it gets executed for this hook. You put before each and after each, these two hooks. Is it making sense? I'm going to demonstrate that by um, by writing some code. What we want to do is use the before each annotation so that we get rid of the duplicate initialization of uh, the math utils instance, right? I'm going to go to Eclipse. And then here is our three methods. And we have math utils initialized for each, which is bad. We are repeating ourselves. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a method here, widen it, and then I'm going to initialize it just here, and get rid of this, and get rid of this. Notice what happens now. If I initialize it over here, that means that this has to be a member variable. It cannot be a method local anymore. So I'm gonna cut this out, make this a member variable. And then I'm going to put that here. Math utils, those new math utils, right? So I have a member variable here. So I essentially kind of have shared state, but it is okay because I'm not depending on the order. I am having the initialization set it up each time so that I don't care if add runs before something else. I'm not initializing it with one of these test methods because there is no guarantee 
that which of these methods are going to run first. So the before each, after each, before all, after all, those are the only ones which have the ordering guarantee. All right. So that's what I'm doing over here. So I have the init method. And what I want to tell JUnit is, please run this before anything else runs. All right. To do that, I use at before each. And then I import this from JUnit Jupyter. And I've told JUnit, hey JUnit, execute this before each method runs. So it doesn't matter if this thing is uh, doing something with MathUtils, right? You put something in MathUtils which could affect another test. It's perfectly fine because guess what? That's going to get scrapped. The next time test divide runs, the before each is going to execute. You're going to get a new instance, fresh instance of MathUtils, and that's what this is going to be using when you use this. Is that making sense? All right, so now look how simple our test has become. It's become much more elegant because you've removed the duplicate code. I'm going to run this one more time. And uh, of course, I need to put this back to arithmetic exception. Otherwise, our test will fail. And now let's run this just to prove that this works. All right, our test is still working. 